Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Big business in South Africa is moving to support President Cyril Ramaphosa's plans to increase investment and job and enterprise creation. Terence Kramer joins me to discuss some of the initiatives that are underway. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Big Business this week pledged its further support for the creation of small and large black owned businesses. Yes, a few years ago, um, Big Business created the small and medium sized f fund. It's a sort of venture capital fund as well as funds to support uh, established businesses or businesses with a sort of good social output. And about 1.4 billion rand was pledged by these big, big businesses that generally fall under business leadership South Africa. So these are the largest corporates that operate in South Africa, some of them being, most of them being South African or on the JSE, others being big uh, multinationals that sit within this organization. And uh, that fund is now uh, in place and is uh, taking action and is being implemented. So about seven or 700 million of that 1.4 uh, billion has already been committed to different projects. It's a fund of fund approach, so they have fund managers operating for them on their behalf in very specific areas, as I mentioned, trying to get uh, hopefully up to 200 uh, black businesses, small black businesses supported and getting sort of high profile black entrepreneurs off the ground if possible with uh, uh, different types of schemes whether it be in technology or the, all the way through to industrial type uh, manufacturing. So uh, th this is now in place but uh, the next step is uh, a new scheme and it's under what we're calling uh, the, what is being called the CEO circle is wanting to actually have higher visibility of large black enterprises. So there's a number of black owned businesses that are doing quite well in South Africa, but they are sort of stuck at the sort of 50 million rand uh, turnover level. And they often are beholden just to one large client. And the idea now is to select maybe up to 10 of these and over the next five years to try and ex have an accelerated agenda for growth of these enterprises so that we can take some of these businesses to the sort of half a billion, 500 million rand type turnover level. So it's a brand new initiative and it's really about using the, the procurement uh, muscle of the large uh, businesses, but also making references to some of their clients, potentially around this, uh, entering their supply chains and uh, really giving these, um, these companies that are really well deserving and really performing well, that's companies that maybe are growing at above 20% uh, a year, uh, even more leverage to get into the sort of larger scope and to create a visible successes of black owned businesses. Uh, so the, this was announced by Discovery CEO Adrian Gore this week and they're hoping to get a list of potential candidates in April and they're hoping to start uh, really getting this implemented and uh, activated in around the third quarter of this year. So it's quite a big audacious plan and it's one that was presented at a function that was attended by uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president himself. The public-private growth initiative is also starting to take shape. Yes, so there's quite a few initiatives now in, in, in play in support of uh, this uh, call for higher levels of investment in South Africa. We know we had the inaugural investment summit last year, which I think was quite well attended. And uh, there, was a n there were a number of projects announced at that. Um, s since then, there's this uh, PPGR, the Pub Public Private Growth Initiative, that is trying to get a sector-based, a sector-specific type plans across a, across a number of sectors in South, South Africa, ranging from mining and energy through to uh, you know, agriculture, construction and aerospace, so a lot of sectors and automotive. And uh, th this is now also starting to get it to a point of possible implementation later this year. 18 high priority projects have been identified in various sectors and uh, details of, th of this are still a little bit sketchy, but I think we have some insight that they're going to be, say for instance, forestry related projects uh, there are going to be some automotive projects and renewable energy projects that are going to come to the fore. And this is really uh, being driven uh, out of the presidency as well. Uh, it's um, uh, the minister in the presidency, of course, is Anna Dlamini Zuma, is responsible from the government side. And she's receiving support from her business counterparts 
uh, uh, from in the f and, and with support from people like Rolf Meyer, Johan van Zell of Toyota fame, and they uh, I think are trying to get these into a, a bankable state, into a state where the re any red tape and any regulation that's currently hindering projects, for instance, in the tourism sector, say the, the visa issue in the uh, telecommunication, the, the lack of spectrum, trying to get that red tape or those regulatory obstacles out the way so that we can start having these sort of high profile, highly visible signs that uh, business is responding to this call for a hundred billion dollars worth of investment over the, over the five year horizon. One of the big difficulties that may affect these initiatives is the rising price and unreliable supply of electricity. Yes, I think that's weighing on everything at the moment. I mean, we know that Moody's is going to be making its uh, declaration on Friday as to whether South Africa should remain uh, investment grade or not. The sort of smart money is on them probably changing the outlook statement slightly, but not downgrading us to junk, so maybe going from stable to negative. But I think a big factor uh, in Moody's decision and in all investors' decisions that are looking at South Africa is the price trajectory as well as the reliability of electricity. And we know we've just come out of a nine, ten day period of load shedding that had a huge psychological impact on, on not only citizens but on business confidence and on the uh, growth outlook. So we've seen major revisions now really to some of the growth outlooks uh, that were, uh, were really fairly low at one, one and a half, well, between one and one and a half percent for the year. We've really seen some revi revisions downwards from those levels because of the, th uh, the issues around electricity. And I think there too, uh, there's going to be a leaning more given the state of Eskom and not only its operational poor performance, but also its financial state, there will be a, a, a tendency to lean more on the private sector. And Minister of Energy this week gave the indication that he was prepared to use his legislative powers where necessary to remove obstacles or to create deviations to allow for some of these pent up supply projects. Now there's quite a lot of them. We know of course that we had an expedited round under the large utility scale that, uh, uh, that got, got nowhere from back from back in 2015 and those projects are, might, might be dusted off again. So there's, there's that pent up supply. Then there's a whole lot of license applications before NURSA that are also in regulatory limbo from smaller or medium sized um, what we call embedded generation projects. And I think if uh, there's some serious um, movement that we could see some investment happening quite quickly. Uh, if those regulatory impediments are taken out of the way or for instance if uh, the RPP office decides to maybe reapproach those, those uh, project developers that had submitted projects at very good prices but which were never eventually procured by government to maybe sort of dust those off. I imagine they would have to do a whole new bid but we could maybe do that quite quickly and then we could start moving into the a more consistent bidding round uh, bidding rounds into the future to buy, to buy independent power producer capacity. Obviously the big issue here is we need the integrated resources resource plan out of the way. It still sits locked in NEDLAC. Uh, so we need that out of the way and promulgated or gazetted so that we can start the procurement. But there might be a, a way for the minister to also add a short-term emergency uh, addendum to the RP where he sets aside allocation for small cell, scale embedded generation for instance and maybe to unlock uh, those projects that uh, never got procured under the, under the utility scale projects at the RPP office. So there's, there's a lot that can happen on the supply side in a fairly short to, or to medium term and I think if we see movement there that too could have a positive impact on those earlier uh, discussions that we had around business wanting to invest in large scale high pr priority projects under the PPGR and then obviously once you have growth it's much easier to support for instance a project like what uh, Adrian Gore was outlining um, where you could take sort of medium sized uh, black enterprises and make them large. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.